art is connected in our mind with beauty and the celebration of color and pleasure. Art from the beginning of time documents our environment, society and human nature. Therefore, many artists dealt with subjects which portrayed the darker side of human nature. We are going to look at the representation of violence and the macabre in art and the reason why artists choose to paint these subjects. In the medieval times and in the Renaissance, violence was part of everyday life. Especially the judicial system relied on harsh punishment and executions. Oppression and injustice among the poor were rife. Many people in the Renaissance would have witnessed a public execution or torture. Therefore, paintings like the martyrdom of St. Erasmus by Dirk Boots would have served a double purpose. The spectator would relate to the suffering of the saint and acknowledge his strength and faith. At the same time, the painting would be a fearful warning for everybody who would dare to ignore the law and the rules of the church. He will meet a gruesome end through torture and death. The Beggars by Peter Bruegel depict a group of beggars. The painting is not meant to arouse our compassion for the disabled and poor. Beggars and the disabled were an attraction at fairs and celebrations. Their suffering served as entertainment and created amusement. The artist depicts them as ugly and foolish. Artemisia Gentilesi was a famous artist of the 16th century. Her painting, Judith and Holofernes, is a particularly violent representation of a common theme. It is suggested many times that the violence portrayed is due to her having been a victim of rape. Most probably Artemisia, as an aspiring and ambitious young artist, wanted to follow the innovations of art at her time. The most famous artist at her time was Caravaggio. Artemisia Gentilesi's painting is very similar to Caravaggio's representation of the same subject. Caravaggio, an exceptional artist, was famous for his dramatic use of light and shade. His paintings are realistic representations of the human state, physical or emotional. This, his models were people from the lower classes of society and the rough features added to the realism of the paintings. Francisco Goya was a romantic painter and printmaker of the late 18th century. Goya became a court painter and a large body of his work deals with violence and the macabre. Goya is the first artist to condemn violence and oppression and injustice in so many paintings and prints. The French Revolution and the Enlightenment changed people's attitudes towards violence and injustice. His groundbreaking painting, the 3rd of May, showing the uprising of the Spanish against the French army, is an image of the horrors of war. It is not a traditional depiction of heroism, but only of the ugliness of war. In many of his prints, he documented the atrocities and the madness of war. His paintings have strong social and political comments. His depiction of the suffering of the poor and the helpless is compassionate and realistic. His painting of the rape of a woman by bandits and his depiction of the appalling conditions of mud houses and prisons are disturbing. In 1793, Goya suffered a serious illness, which left him deaf. His work became dark and researchers hint at mental illness. His painting, Corozas, is from this period. It is easy to see it as a macabre picture of mental instability. In reality, it is a strong comment of the church and society. It is a critique of superstition, the Spanish Inquisition, ignorance and the ugliness of human nature. Theodore Jericho lived in the 19th century. The painting depicts the shipwreck of the French ship Medusa. The ship sank and the captain left crew and passengers to die. The survivors who were left on a raft succeeded in reaching France. Few of them survived and had to resort to cannibalism. This macabre story created an uproar in France and became a symbol against the corrupted French government. Jericho became a controversial artist who tackled many other social issues. 
His pictures of severed heads and limbs of criminals are a macabre criticism of justice and society. His sensitive portrayal of people with mental problems, a kleptomaniac and a demented old woman, are another example. He portrayed them as individuals. Approaching the end of the 19th century, profound changes take place in Europe and the rest of the world. In art, we have the rise of symbolism, impressionism, and modernism. Industrialism, science, technology, and new political ideas propel the world forwards. At the same time, a strong movement with roots in a nostalgia for the past emerged. Cynicism, pessimism, the irrational were part of it, and the belief that civilization brought decadence. Symbolist artists strongly represented this backlash to modernism with many artworks representing the macabre and the morbid, sexual diversion, exploration of evil or the immoral. These artworks are not meant to have a social lesson or give a moral view to the spectator. Walter Sigurd was a late Victorian artist who did a series of paintings which he called the Campton Town Murder. The paintings were based on a true event, the brutal murder of a prostitute. When the paintings were exhibited, they caused a lot of controversy. They also caused a lot of controversy a few years ago when it was claimed that Sigurd was the infamous Jack the Ripper. Of course, this is a ridiculous claim. It was a common practice to visit prostitutes in the Victorian era, but Sickert portrayed these subjects with realism and loose impressionistic brushwork. This was innovative and controversial for English painting at the time.